forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna jump right in with another segment of Talk Nerdy to Me. This time what we're gonna talk about is called service-based exploitation. I'm gonna do another video on client-side exploitation, but let's talk about service-based exploitation. In the traditional sense, when a lot of people are talking about vulnerability management, they're like, hey, I need to run my vulnerability scanner. So when you run your vulnerability scanner, this is when you're going to see people who want to run things like Nessus, Qualys, Encircle, you know, GFI Landguard, whatever their particular scanner of choice is, Nexpose, whatever. But what you really need to understand is what's going on. So your vulnerability scan usually starts off with something like a ping sweep. When you want to know if a host is online, you ping it. Hey, can I ping that IP address? If it pings, you go, yep, it's online, it's up. So you'll start by pinging the entire subnet. You'll ping every computer in the entire network. The ones that respond back, you go, hey, that computer's online. Now, some people go, well, what if it's blocking ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, what's being used for ping and trace route? Well, when you use tools like Nmap and other scanning tools, they'll do two types of pings. One is an ICMP ping, the traditional ping, and another is a TCP ping, where they're sending a SYN synchronization packet to port 80 of the host. I think that's enough on that. Let's keep moving on. But effectively, what you're trying to do is go, hey, are these hosts online? And for every host that's online, we now want to see what ports are open. If I see one whole subnet with, let's say, 50 machines all running port 80, HTTP, web servers, that's probably where, that's probably their server farm, right? That's probably their DMZ. If I see in my port scan, some machines running port 389, LDAP, right? Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Hey, those are probably domain controllers. So the reason that you do a ping sweep is to figure out which machines are alive. The reason that you do a port scan is to figure out what services are available. If I see FTP and a bunch of machines over here, okay, the FTP servers are on this side of the subnet or on this network. The mail servers, port 25, they're on this network. Okay, uh, all the web servers, they're over here. Oh, LDAP and domain controllers are over here. File servers are over here. Oh, I see port 5060. Oh, that's voice over IP. Okay, the voice VLAN is over here. What you're trying to do is you're trying to do a network map, thus the name, in map. You're trying to map the network. Well, when you're an attacker, you don't have a Visio diagram of the network. So the reason that you start by ping sweeping and then port scanning is so you can build that network map. You get a lay of the land by figuring out what hosts are up and what services they're running. Once you know what services they're running, now you know it is an FTP server. Well, now we need to know what type of FTP server it is. Is it pro FTP, serve you FTP? You know, what is it and what version is it? That's when you're going to do a banner grab or version query where you connect to the port and if I connect to port 21, the FTP server, and it says, hey, I'm serve you FTP 4.2, well, now you go look up, hey, is there a vulnerability for serve you FTP version 4.2, right? We call that the vulnerability research stage where we go to websites like securityfocus.com, slash BID or exploit-db.com and we look that stuff up. We look that stuff up and we see, hey, is that version of web server or mail server or DNS server or whatever, is it vulnerable to attack? And if there is, is there corresponding exploit code for it? And then I will use a framework like Metasploit, Core Impact, Saint, or Canvas to exploit that vulnerability. 
So sometimes you'll have other code that's out there. I probably should have wrote POC, proof of concept code. So websites like ExploitDB and securityfocus.com slash BID will have sometimes proof of concept code where it's not in Metasploit, but it's just a script that you can download and run the attack yourself. So this is the process that an attacker goes through. Now when you buy a vulnerability scanner, your vulnerability scanner does that. So a lot of people get into all these arguments. Hey, you know, Nexpose is way better than Nessus and, you know, Qualys is the best vulnerability scanner on the planet and all this kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, there are some differentiators between the products, but for the most part, I don't think Ping has really changed in the last 30 or so years. So I don't know that one scanner necessarily pings way better or port scans way better or looks up in the same database that we all use way better than one of the other scanners. When I'm, when I'm rating vulnerability scanners, the big things that I look for are price, support, and reporting. These are the three categories that I use when I'm really trying to figure out what product I should be buying. If you're in a big environment and you've got, let's say, 10,000 workstations, if the vulnerability scanner tells you it's going to cost you $10 per IP address per year, well, that's going to be a pretty expensive network for you to scan. If you're in a situation where you have to write a lot of custom vulnerability checks, maybe your environment has a lot of non-standard software or non-standard configurations. So you need your vulnerability scanner to try and find these custom misconfigurations that are only in your environment or uh, uh, stuff that, that is uh, tuned just for you. Uh, and you, you have to be able to, to find those types of things. You're going to want support. You're going to want somebody you can get on the phone with who can help you with that. And the last thing is reporting. Maybe you have special compliance needs. And you need to really be able to differentiate that this is a HIPAA violation for medical or Sarbanes-Oxley or ISO 27000, or maybe you needed to integrate with your trouble ticketing system, and when it finds a vulnerability, it dispatches it to the server team or the help desk team or the appropriate owner of that system who needs to patch it. That's like a reporting requirement. So to me, when I'm evaluating these security products, especially considering that mostly this is what they do, right? And, and most of them even license NMAP to do it. So in a lot of cases, a lot of these vulnerability scanners are just using NMAP. And then they've downloaded these databases from the web and they do the lookups against these databases. So effectively, you're paying to use NMAP. Yeah, hey, that is what it is. Now, I'm not saying don't use vulnerability scanners because I use them. You know, I don't really want to hand jam and do all this in that stuff. It's a lot nicer to have a nice little GUI tool that I can point and click through. And really, most importantly, is my environment. Is price going to be the most important to me? Is support going to be the most important to me? Or is reporting going to be the most important to me? Now, I know a lot of people will be like, well, Joe, I mean, there are technical factors to consider, and, and they are, don't get me wrong, but in a lot of cases, those technical factors are going to wrap up into support and how open the architecture is for you to get in there and drive, and if that's what you need, sounds to me like you need support. So, I really hope this kind of sums it up. This is service-based vulnerabilities and how service-based vulnerability management tends to work. I'm going to talk a little bit about client-side vulnerabilities. Uh, Client-side vulnerabilities, I'll talk about that in our next video. So let's stop right now. I hope this really kind of helps you out and wish you guys all the best. See you next week. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.